The image is vivid in my mind. The night I'm thinking about is a clear and recurring memory. Five or six of us are seated on the ground around a smouldering campfire under a star-filled black sky by the waters of the Gulf of Carpentaria in Australia's remote north. It is 1982, 27 years ago. Our baby is sleeping in a cot nearby. There is no wind, no temperature to notice, no sounds. The darkness begins immediately behind us. My husband's uncle, Maso, the ceremonial leader of the Yanua people, is telling stories about spirit ancestors in the bush around us about people leaving their bodies to travel vast distances, about messages birds and animals bring to people in danger. Afterwards, we drift off to sleep in the total silence. This same man hauls an enormous sack of writhing crabs across the mud flats the next day to throw on the coals of the fire. We share the sweet white flesh with his family, laughing, talking, enjoying each other's company. And this same man commands the hunting boat for dugong, singing the song of the animal spirit when it is speared, cutting its portions for distribution according to ritual and protocol. I pick up just a crude inkling of the interconnection between his powerful culture and the everyday balance of a satisfying life lived in harmony with the elements. In his words and when he is quiet, I sense the sharp wisdom and deep humanity that lies beneath his humility. We were visiting my husband John's Aboriginal community at Burralola in Australia's Northern Territory. It was the start of an extraordinary journey.